So it's a work based on joined with uh, Caitlin Payton, who is currently a first year graduate student at Georgia Tech uh, with my advisor, Luz Wenke. So that is about product dimension of random graphs. So before I give you the formal definition of product dimension, let me give you some high level idea about this concept. So actually product dimension is related to the three following concept. First, it relates to the representation problem where people try to encode some object in an efficient way. And it is also a problem about decomposition where people try to uh, divide an object into fill its number of some simpler object. Um, because product dimension is some dimension, it also means that we try to invite an object into mean number of one dimensional objects. So those are some rough idea about product dimension. And so that is a parameter release all of these three concepts. And it was introduced by Nastro, Porter, and Rodo in the late 1970s. And for the definition of product dimension, because it, uh, we will see that it's a natural notation. So there are many different definitions and we will see it in next slides. And before our results, there are many approaches were applied to study product dimension, including the algebraic ones, the combinatorial ones, and the information theoretical ones. And it has been proved that uh, to determine the product dimension of general graph is NP hard. Therefore, you can see that studying product dimension is an interesting but hard problem. So in this talk, we will introduce our result. Our result that we solve product dimension conjecture by a fruity and counter. So that we determine the order of magnitude of product dimension of random graphs with hyperobability. Okay, now let's move on to give the definition of product dimension. So if you have a graph G, the product dimension of G is the mean number K such that there exists a K colorable clique edge covering of the complement graph of G. So let me explain it word in word. So what does it mean for clique covering? Of a graph. So if you have a graph, then the click covering of the graph is a collection of clicks in the graph, in the graph that cover all edges of the graph. So for example, if this is your graph, then you can see those colorful clicks, they form a click covering because each edge of the graph is colored by one of the clicks at least one of the clicks. For example, this edge is colored by red one and this blue one, and this edge is covered by this yellow one. So they form a, a click covering, click edge covering. Okay, so if you have a collection of click, uh, of click edge covering, so what does it mean that it is key colorable? It means that we can give the uh, clicks in this collection some different colors so that the clicks in the same color class are vertex disjoint. For example, if you have this, this click coloring, uh, to color them, you need at least three colors because for these three clicks, they have to receive different colors because they intersect at this vertex. Okay. And another way to see that is related to the coloring problem is that you can build this collection of click coloring as a hypergraph, where the vertex set of the hypergraph is just a vertex set of the original graph, and a hyper edge corresponds to the vertex set of a click. So for example, this, this click corresponds to a full edge, and this click corresponds to three edge, uh, you need to color the hyper edge with different colors so that they are vertex disjoint. Okay, so that is the definition of product dimension. That is the minimum K such that uh, there exists a K colorable 
clear covering of the complement graph G. So is there a question about this definition? So because we will always use this definition. So if you have any question, feel free to interrupt me. Okay, now I hope uh, everyone understands the definition of product dimension. Uh, that was introduced by Nostril Porter and Rodo. Uh, there are many equivalent definitions. This click based one is uh, useful for our analysis later. And for brevity, because here you have the complement for brevity, we define the click chromatic number to be just the product dimension of the complete graph of G itself. So that is really the minimum, minimum K such that there exists a K colorable click covering of the graph G itself. So we define it as click chromatic number of graph G. Okay, so here is the main definition of our result. And in this talk, I will explore more results about this definition. So I hope uh, everyone remembers this definition. Okay, then, then we can uh, have a look at the main problem. So what is the main problem? The main problem is a conjecture by Fudi and Counter in 2018. So they conjecture that with high probability, the product dimension of the random graph GNP has the order of magnitude n over log n for all constant p. So that is their conjecture. So we can have a look at their conjecture. So first, the first observation is that for some graph G, the product dimension can be as large as uh, n minus one, which is much bigger than this one. And um, because when p equal to one half, the random graph G n one half just take each of the n vertex graph uniformly at random. So their conjecture states that uh, almost all the n vertex graph has product dimension roughly n over log n. Therefore, they, their conjecture implies that this case is very rare. Okay, then to, if you want to prove this conjecture, it's enough to show that the clay chroma number of GMP also has this order of magnitude with high probability. So why is enough? Because by definition, we know that the product dimension of GNP is just the, the click command number of the complement graph of, it, of it itself. So the complement of graph of GNP is just the, has the same distribution as GN1 minus P, which is also a constant. So if you can prove this kind of result, that will imply this result. Therefore, uh, we will focus on the click command number. In the following. Okay, to prove this kind of bound, and actually the lower bound is simple. So, what is a lower bound of k chroma number of GNP? That means the minimum color you need to use to color any click, uh, to color any click uh, edge covering of the graph. So, what is the minimum number? For example, you want to uh, cover all the edges instead to the maximum degree vertex. So we claim that the a lower bound is the maximum degree of GNP divided by the maximum click size of GNP, roughly that one, minus one actually. So why it's true? That is because if you want to color, uh, cover all the edges instead to this maximum degree vertex, you need to use at least so many clicks to cover it, right? You need at least so many because each, uh, each clicks can cover at most this number of edges. So you need at least so many clicks. And because those clicks incident to this vertex, it means you need to give them, you need to color them by different color. Therefore you need at least so many colors. And we know that the maximum degree of GNP is roughly n times P. And uh, the maximum click size of GNP is roughly two times log n, where the base is one over p. So that's why it implies this uh, lower bound. So that is the lower bound. And the difficult part is to prove an upper bound. So 
So to prove an upper bound, this kind of this kind of bound suggests that uh, an upper bound means that you need to find a click edge coloring that can be color that can be colored by so many colors. So this type of bound suggests that we really need to deal with clicks of very large size, the size of roughly log n. So that is a difficult part because typically maybe if the size is some constant, it may be easier to deal with. But here we really need to deal with clicks of very large size. So that's a main difficulty of our uh, result. Okay, so that is one problem. So I hope everyone understand this problem. Okay, then next we will move on to our main result. So we solve their conjecture by proving that with high probability, the click chromatic number of GNP uh, has this order of magnitude for all constant P. So because by the relation we mentioned in last slide, it will it will imply the product dimension conjecture of Boolean counter. Uh, actually, we prove some stronger result. So when p tend to zero, we not only determine the order of magnitude, we also determine the asymptotics of it. Uh, actually, here we can also prove some stronger result so that we can require the clicks in the click covering to be edge disjoint and find the minimal chromatic number of those click covering. So that is some stronger result. Okay, so what is the motivation for us to study this kind of problem? Because as I mentioned, when p equals one half, this result implies that the click chromatic number and the product dimension of GMP for almost all the graph is roughly n over log n. So that is a property for almost all the graph. And the second motivation is that uh, this kind of problem is related to the covering and decomposition problems. For example, in this era, uh, Fruits, uh, Fritz and Reed in 1995, they take the minimum of the size of the clicks in the, uh, take the minimum size of the click covering of GNP and they determine that the minimum size is roughly this one, it's high probability. And another result is by Fudian the counter, they determine that the minimum of the maximum degree of the clay covering of GMP is roughly this one. So let me explain what is the maximum degree mean. Again, here we will this clay covering of GMP as a hypergraph, as I mentioned, where the Vertex side of the hypergraph is just the vertex side of GMP. And the hyper edge of this hypergraph corresponds to the vertex side of the clicks in the click covering C. So the maximum degree of this hypergraph is just the maximum number of clicks in this click covering that contains a fixed vertex. So as I mentioned in previous slides, this one is uh, this one is at most this click chromatic number. So actually our result implies these two results. Okay, so that is the second motivation. And the third motivation to study this problem is that we actually use two random greedy uh, approaches to solve this kind of, uh, to solve this result. Okay, so let's have a look about our proof of this, this result. So how do we prove that the click chromatic number of GMP is roughly this one? So as I mentioned, the upper bound is difficult. That means we need to find a click, uh, we need to find a click cover of GMP that has chromatic index and was this one. So our proof uh, consists of two parts. So the first part is to find a click cover of GMP. And to find this click cover of uh, clay covering of GNP, we use the semi-random approach so that we find this clay covering step by step. At each time, we find the collection of clicks. Uh, and finally, the union of this collection of clicks of GNP, they really cover all the edges of GNP and they form the clay covering as we want. So that is the first part. 
we use some semi-random algorithm. Uh, and for the second part, we, we need to give them give the clicks some colors. And you can see that because this is the union of those subtractions, therefore the chromatic index of those click covering is just at the most a sum of the chromatic index of those subtractions. And to bound the chromatic index of this subtraction, we use some random greedy algorithm to bound it. And therefore it will imply this kind of bound. Okay, so let me explain a little bit detail about the, uh, the second part, uh, those, two, uh, those two parts. So for the first part, we need to find the click covering. And the idea is that we start with, uh, with the binomial random graph GNP, and we call it G0. And if, we, if you have the GI, then we remove some random collection of clicks of, of some large size, which is size roughly this one. We take them out, we take the edge of them out, and they form the subtraction of clicks, and then we get the GI plus one. And we do this iteratively for many steps, so that after some capital I step, you get some, 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 some subgraph GI, and at, at that moment, we take all the remaining edges to be clicks of size two to be the last collection of clicks. And therefore you can figure out that uh, if, if you take uni of those subsections, we really form the click covering of GMP itself because each edge is included in one of the clicks in some sub collection. Uh, the key property here is that by the semi-random approach, we can guarantee that each graph GI behaves like a random graph GNPI for some PI de uh, decrease exponentially. And as you can see, uh, those kind of GI, the maximum click size in GI, you can see it's roughly two times this log n. Where here we take some small constant, a times log. So you can see the clicks we take out are really large and they can be as large as log n. So that's why we need to deal with clicks of size very large. And definitely to, can, to prove this kind of key property, we need some more technical twists, but I do not want to mention it over here. So that is the first part about how, to, how, how do we get the key covering of uh, GNP. We do it by some semi-random algorithm. And the second part is about how, how do we bound the uh, click chromatic number of them. So we clean that because we know that the click index of C is just the sum of the click index of the sub collection. And if we can, I, I claim that if we can prove that the click uh, index of each CI is at most some constant C, universal constant C, times the maximum degree of the CI itself, then we, we will complete our proof by this K property. So here the main difficulty is about to show this relation. Again, you build this CI as a hypergraph. So the vertex side of the hypergraph is just a vertex side, the n vertex, n vertices. And the hyper edge corresponds to the vertex side of the peak in this collection. So actually in the last step, we have this kind of relation because in the last step, the CI is just a simple graph. And by Vizing theorem, we know that it has most of two times the maximum degree of the graph. So that's why for the last step, it's true. But for previous step, our clicks has size uh, really large, not just a two. So that is some kind of hypergraph. And we really need to prove this kind of result. So this type of result maybe remind you of the Pepin and Spencer like result. So what is the Pepin and Spencer result? Their result stays like for any constant k. And if you have a for an, if you have a k uniform n vertex hypergraph H, which is nearly regular, which means each vertex of H is roughly in the same number of 
hyper edges and has small code degree, which means for any two vertex of H, they are in a small number of hyper edges. Then they claim that the chromatic index of H is at most one plus epsilon times the maximum degree of H. And as you can see, their result really like what we want, right? You have some constant over here, but we can we actually cannot apply permanent Spencer result. But why? It's because in permanent Spencer result, the uniformity of the hypergraph K must be some constant. But as I mentioned, we really need to deal with hypergraph is very large uniformity, see as large as log n. So that's why permanent Spencer result does not apply to our case. So that's a difficulty. So that's a solution. We can still prove this kind of bound by using the randomness because each CI is a random set of uh, peaks. Uh, that's why we can extend the uniformity of really large. So that is our next result about the chromatic index of random hypergraph. So this result states that if you have a K uniform inverted hypergraph, you host graph H, where the uniformity of H is uh, between, is at most some constant B times log N. So it can be really very large and it's nearly regular, which means each vertex of H is in roughly so many edges, hyper edges. And a small code degree, which means any two vertices of H is in a small number of uh, hyper edges. Then if you have a random sub hypergraph, see HM, where you take M edges off uniform and random, where I'm satisfied some relation, so it's much less than the total number of the host graph. Then with high probability, we can prove that the chromatic index of those random sub hypergraph is at most one plus some constant delta times the maximum degree of the hypergraph. Where this delta satisfies the relation that this B over uh, this constant sigma. So the key point is that here we allow the uniformity to be as large as log n. So for example, if your k is little of log n, then your b can be little of one. Therefore, this delta can be little of one. So that is permanent Spencer-like result. But what we need is actually k is really big o of log n. So b may be not some little one term, but some large constant. But we still can bound it by some large constant c. Therefore, that is what we want. So this result implies the chromatic index for the uh, subtraction. So that will imply our product dimension result. Okay, then in the next few minutes, I will briefly uh, give you the idea to prove this chromatic index result for random hypergraph. So what is the idea to prove it? And the idea is simple. We use some random greedy algorithm. So actually we are allowed to use so many colors. Uh, what is random greedy algorithm? Random, random greedy algorithm as a following. At each step, we simple one random edge of H, uniform and random. And then we color the edge by an available color, uniform and random. So what is available color? It means the color is not used on any edge that you sampled before and is uh, in, intersect with this edge. For example, at first step, you sample this edge, you have some available colors, you choose one of them, uniform at random. And next time you sample another one, and choose one available color, uniform at random. And at this step, the available color become two lights because it intersects with those two edges. So you have some less uh, available colors. So as you can see, as long as if you go until M step, there are always available colors then you can color it properly with the required number of colors. So it will work. So what we really need to do is to prove that as long as I'm step, there are always available colors. And we prove that it, that is true by using differential equation method. So we prove that with high probability for all the edges, the number of available colors after I step is roughly this one, concentrated around this one. And we can prove that after so many, after M step, this number is really uh, much bigger than one. So it means there are always available colors along, along all the steps. 
Therefore, we can proper color the random subtype as well. Okay, so that is proof idea of our uh, chromatic index result. Okay, so as a summary, uh, we study the product dimension of our graph, and we prove that with high probability, the product dimension of random graph GNP is, has order of magnitude of this one for all kinds of P. So it verifies our conjecture by Fuji and Counter. So our proof is consisted of two parts. First part is the semi-random uh, nibble part to find a collection of uh, click edge covering. Uh, second part is the random greedy part. We find the chromatic index of each subcollection of clicks. So the new tools is the chromatic index result for random paper graph, which deal with edge of size log n. There's some open problem. We actually here are we determining the order of magnitude of GNP. So we can ask what is the asymptotics of product dimension of GNP. Uh, second problem is that for some range of P, we really determine the asymptotics, but there are some gaps. So maybe you can close the gaps there. All right, so uh, thanks for listening. Uh, let me stop here.